So normally we are live. I'm just waiting so that I can have the screen on my phone so that I can follow the questions. Yeah. I need to put the volume down here. Sorry. A uh, few settings. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Um, so just a few settings. I'm going to delete this in the editing afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see when I see the comments. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think it's fine. Oh, sorry, let, let me try to find another YouTube window so I can just double check what I have on my phone. Okay, hello everyone, if you're following already. Okay, so I, I have a screen here as well. Okay, <laughs> sorry for the, the delay in starting. So, <clears throat> hello everyone and welcome to the day two of the Grand multi Literacy event. And I hope you have enjoyed yesterday's sessions, which gave you an insight into the latest research on multi literacy. Uh, if you miss some of them, you can still uh, catch up later. They're all on my YouTube channel. Um, and on this second day, we're going to see a bit more in practice what it means to raise multilingual readers. So these sessions are surely going to give us more practical tips, things we can implement on a day-to-day -day basis. And to start off, uh, I would like to welcome Anna Cardelli Lynch and Vivian Lungo, uh, with whom we are going to, hello, <laughs> we're going to talk about how to gently lead our children towards reading, how to create a nice environment that will make the journey more enjoyable. And yeah, so thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Yoshita. Thank you. Thank you for organizing this wonderful event. Really, really <laughs> worth it. Thank, thank, thank you, you very having. much. Uh, I'm just going to introduce you quickly. If you want to add anything, feel free to add anything afterwards. Uh, so Anna and Vivienne uh, are the founders of Lucas Library. They have their t-shirt with the logo of Lucas <laughs> Library. Uh, it's a website for parents and teachers who are raising and educating bilingual children. So uh, they offer online courses and webinars, free printable resources, practical tips on raising bilinguals and all of that in Italian, but all their resources are applicable to all, home, any yeah. home language. So mm -hmm. if some of your Italian speakers, I guess it's a good website to know, it's www.lucaslibrary.com. I leave the link in the description. And yeah, and so one thing uh, that's probably very good is that it, it follows last session from yesterday with uh, Dr. Nair Ibrahim, uh, who talked about picture books, because I believe you use a lot of picture books to teach uh, a second language. Uh, so it's it's a good follow up. Uh, is there anything I missed out or you would like to add? No, it was perfect. Yeah. Perfect introduction. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so to start with, uh, would you like to tell us about yourself? So who you are to each other, because you're not just business partners. Uh, and what led you to creating uh, Luca's library and, and who is Luca? So, yeah, so um, together, as you said, we formed the team of Luca's library. So I'm Vivian and this is Anna and we are mother and daughter. And Luca is my son and, of course, her grandson. And basically, um, I, I always wanted to raise my children now I have only one son but it was my dream to raise uh, them bilingual or should I say multilingual because in the case with Luca um, we use three languages 
So yeah. Italian, because I'm Italian, or we are Italian, <laughs> English and uh, Korean, because my husband is Korean and we live in Korea. Yeah. So, you know, when I was with him at home, playing, reading in both Italian and English, because I leave Korean to my um, husband and to the teachers and society. So I do basically everything in Italian and English. So yeah. I was sharing, started sharing everything, you know, what I was doing with him, uh, you know, books I was reading, how I was reading them, resources, practical tips, as you said, um, games, activities. And at the same time, since I was a teacher, an English teacher here in Korean, uh, to children, I was using those books and those storytelling techniques and activities and resources at school. So I was applying them with, you know, with my my pupils. Yeah. And so I, you know, I thought, what, why not building, creating a website for both parents and teachers yeah. um, who are, you know, educating and raising bilingual, multilingual uh, children. And that's it. So that's when I asked my mom <laughs> to join me uh, in this journey and within this project, because, of course, she has many, many years of, uh, as, of experience as a teacher, English teacher to children. And because also she raised me bilingual mm. with Italian and English. So... That's it. Well, That's Lucas. Thank you very much. And I believe, Anna, you used to be a teacher in international school as well. So you know yes. the. Yeah. Yes, I am. Um, I am. Um, I was born as a primary school teacher and I uh, I taught English for about 30 years to Italian children. My yeah. last five years um, were um, last. Um, I worked three years in a European school in, um, in, in Italy and then two years in England in English schools. So yeah. um, it, it was a bit, a bit different, but it was always about, you know, developing another language yeah. and uh, speaking different languages. And the European school was a, an amazing, amazing um, experience for me as a person. Yeah. As a teacher, uh, I really, I felt I grew a lot uh, professionally and um, yeah, because also all, as a person. all the environment and all the system is completely yes. different. Yes. As a yeah. public school. Yeah. Well. As an, uh, yeah. As a state school. But anyway, yeah. this is and it. What this I, is. I like about this combination of you two and Luca, who is uh, part of the team, I guess, uh, yeah. is that raising multilingual children is really about connections between the families uh, between the like within the family generation so often we try to keep our home language so that our children can speak with their grandparents uh, so you represent really that the, the this multilingual family and you're working yeah. together to create more resources for parents and teachers so that's great we can and, do that. Yeah, we're really lucky. We, we're really lucky. We can yeah. do that now because of internet. Yeah. yeah and this is true, yeah. much easier. So uh, in, in, in other times, it wouldn't have been so, so yeah. easy. And of course, we try to be together as much as we can. But England and Korea are a bit far away. Yeah. <laughs> a little tiny Just bit. bit. <laughs> so we're very lucky to find us together this time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the timing was perfect because now we are in Korean, let's say that, and yeah. he's finally came to visit us. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was going to say the name you found, so Lucas Library, really yeah. shows how much reading and books are important for you. Um, wh why do you think it's important for multilingual children in general? Well, it is very important because <laughs> books can be a door to a new world for any child, whether yeah. they speak one language or more than one. So books must be in a house. They have to be there. They have to find their own place there. For a multilingual family, they are even more important because we can 
develop the different languages um, with the help of the books, we can um, learn new words, new structures, more and more complex sentences. We can um, be more and more familiar with different sounds in, in, in languages, rhymes, alliterations. So being able to read a book in one language and another book in another, or the same book in two different languages, for a child that is growing multilingual is very important because he will have the whole idea of a world of many, many words yeah. that sound different, but sometimes they mean the same, sometimes they don't. So uh, it's, it's really the basis, the tool, the most important tool that we use. Yeah. And I also used it with children at school, of course. Yeah. Thank you and very also, much. Uh, we, sorry, if I yeah. may add something. Yes. It's important, um, because I live uh, with Luca, my experience with Luca, we have different alphabets. So I was yeah. thinking this while you were. So actually, he can actually see the the different alphabet are written. So he knows the, the general idea of even, you know, um, the physical aspect of the yes, language yeah yeah the other day we were in um, in that bookshop second-hand yeah. bookshop and uh, i chose some books in english mm -hmm. as some right. picture books and luca said oh no no please can you read this for me and he pointed at a book that was written in korean and i said i'm sorry it's written in korean oh yes don't worry you read that <laughs> and he found another one. So for him, it was yeah completely normal, you yeah. know. And he laughs because I'm I'm starting reading in Korean, and he he can see the effort I make because reading <laughs> is an effort for everyone. And as adults, we forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we that's take true, it for yeah. granted. But when you're here, and when I'm here, and I can't read the name. Of, of of streets or, or even the instructions or even on packets of food it's yeah. really frustrating yeah. and so <laughs> the real importance of being able to read and and interact and communicate and get the information yeah. just, uh, i think what you, you just mentioned about frustration is a very good point so it can be a frustrating uh experience but like we're going to talk about it today, but we need to transform it into more curiosity and bringing the, the child to want to discover this code and to understand it. And I'm just going to mention a um, comment we have from Uta, who is following us. Um, Hi, Uta. <laughs> she went to an international school as well, and she says it it's really is a completely different experience, a unique experience. Uh, and about teaching uh, in multiple languages uh, for different subjects. So that's also probably uh, another topic for another video interview with oh, someone. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different way of learning. It's not like a foreign language. It's part of the learning. It's used for the learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes it is. And as a so, teacher, as a yeah. teacher, I was learning there yes, because yes. I was working with a French colleague and with an English colleague ah, and yeah. mixing the language. And I was learning French more and more, you know. Um, so for me, it was it was really very, very deep experience, really. I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, Ute is, is adding, Bello vedervi, vedervi conosciuto. <laughs> I guess it means nice to see you with Yoshito. Wow. Yes. Fantastic. Grazie, 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 Ute. And so today, as I said, we're going to talk about creating an environment. Uh, but yeah. before we go into details on that, is there anything um, you think is important uh, to, to know or to think about when we are thinking of starting on the journey? So what are the, the things, because it's not like we think, okay, I'm going to teach my child to read uh, in Korean. Uh, so I'm going to put a, a book in his hands and, and that's it. I'll, I'll teach him from, day, from that day. There is a lot before. Before we go into the 
environment things? Is there any additional things you would like to point out? Well, as you said, it's not something that you just start, you know, you just wake up and say, okay, today let's read a Korean or English or whatever uh, yeah. book or poem and then he will learn. No, because it's a job and it's a hard job. <laughs> and um, you, of, of course, by saying that you don't have to be a researcher, you don't have to be a professor, a teacher. I mean, uh, it's 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 a job and you have to be with it with all the jobs you have to have passion and you have to prepare um both yeah you have to know the theory but also like physically prepare like choose good books like good quality books or choose games activities that your child likes and that your child likes and um also be ready to be present you have to be there. You have to guide them, uh, not uh, how can I say push them, pressure them, but like be gently insistent and also be there because it's, it's a quality time that you get to share with them. Mm. And uh, it has to be, as we said before, natural and they have to feel at ease and comfortable. And it's a plus, like in my case, that my um, target language it's my mother language. So for him, it's the language that his mother um, is speaking. And so he has this emotional sphere connected to it. And, but I think as well with English, because he has a connection with her and we get to go to England very often. So it's, it's an environment within the your home but also outside and as we said before it's a a full family the whole family is working together with different yeah. roles um and different schedules <laughs> and schedules yeah. but um it's it yeah it's a job you have to be ready you have to be present you have to love it and you have to be positive you have to be ready to read the books first yeah oh, read yeah, them yeah understand them think whether you like them or not because if you don't like a book even if it's the best book in the world you won't be able yeah. to read it to a child yeah, so sometimes i tell vegan oh vegan i've got this book <laughs> it's really great you know he says I, I don't like it i'm not gonna get it yeah <laughs> it's fair enough because she wouldn't be able to um, interact with Luca in the right way. So first of all, That's you have such to a like. Good point. Yeah, a, a book that could be very good for one parent is not necessarily good for the other yeah. one. It's not just the book; it's about how we feel about the book and how we can transmit this experience of reading the story to the to our children. Yeah. Later on, we will say you. Know, we will tell you more something more yeah, about yeah. it, more in depth. So. Because yeah. it's an important point. It's an yes. important point, this one. Yeah. And, and so, uh, as I said, I would like to talk a bit more precisely about the environment. So how yeah. to create an environment that, that facilitates the start of the learning, uh, of the learning journey of reading and writing in the home language. Um, so what was my question? Uh, Ah, yeah, yeah. So, so, sorry. Just basically, what have you done uh, in your home uh, to facilitate, to, to organize? How did you organize the environment to create uh, uh, a way for Luca to start being interested in reading and starting his journey on learning to read and write? So, <laughs> as you may see there are books everywhere but now you just see the bookshelf Luca this is Luca's bookshelf and okay. <clears throat> um, there are books everywhere uh, also you know as I said before bo board games uh, um, other you know activities uh, we play a lot with play-dohs and you know puppets and stuff actually the whole house is speaking to him in English, in Korean, and in Italian, um, mainly because I like them, I read 
um, a lot of books. But yeah, we do a lot of other activities. And um, yeah, as I said before, the whole house is talking to it. We, we, I have posters, you know, the one with letters in the alphabet, in, in one in English, one in Italian, and one in Korean. And he goes there and he try to read them. Yeah, we can't we can't show you now, but houses in Korea, as you know, oh, are yeah. very small. Yeah, <laughs> they're very small. And yeah. when I came in, I said to her, "What are these books doing here?" Because there are actually a few books. I don't know, five or six next to Lucas bed. Then there okay. are there is a sort of mini bookshelf in the bathroom. <laughs> in the toilet there is a mini bookshelf with books other books in, in many languages of course and and at, at every corner yeah. of the house which is a very small house so it's you can see just books basically <laughs> and and there are these books that Luca chose to read in a particular moment um, mm -hmm. of his daily routine so next to his bed there are the books that he likes to be read Good night. when he goes to, to sleep. Yeah. You can imagine the use of the books in the bathroom and <laughs> some others near his toys. So he's got toys together with some books, together with some board games. Yeah. It's part of the environment. Yeah. It's, they're yeah. not in one place confined and that's it. That's yeah, such that's a good tip, that. yeah, to, to have them a bit everywhere. And like you said, there are toys as well and board games. So it's not just, it doesn't look academic at all. It's just for pleasure. <laughs> it's to, to play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and so one thing I wanted to say, and, and Ute is also highlighting it, but I, I we really like when you said the whole house speaks to Luca in Korean, English and Italian. It's like it's really creating an environment that speaks to him. It's not yeah. just called there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, also, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, also, like the books are are mine books as well, my husband. And so again, you've have everything in Italian and English and Korean. So he actually sometimes, if I live and then now there is a book next to the armchair because I was reading it and he's in Italian. Sometimes he goes there and he just, you know, flip the pages, go through because he's just curious. And it's an Italian book for adults, no pictures at all, but he just goes. So that's, I think, yeah, he's a very curious boy. I admit it. But if you leave whatever book in any language, any genre, any type of book, like comic books or like the newspaper, whatever, or a poster of uh, the movie that you watched last night at the cinema, whatever it gets their attention, if they're curious enough, if you let them, if you, if you guide them uh, to be curious, if you enable their curiosity, yeah. they, everything is gonna be something that they're gonna learn anything at all yeah and, sometimes yeah. you may you may drop a book somewhere just you know I think hoping that is going to to yeah. <laughs> pick it up and, and say oh why don't you read it for me you know I, I did that as well like, we have also a few places in our house where we have books and but so often like, if I don't do anything with the same books in the same places so I try to vary them a bit and to leave yeah. so our languages are French and Korean and yeah. I tried to leave some books in French and my wife in Korean, like to, just to encourage him. And because he was part of it, he would just start reading them uh, because yeah. it, just because it was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. So that, that was my question, actually. Do you, so, you know, you said there's some books in the toilet, some books in the, in the, in the, in the, the next to his bed. Do you, is it specific books or do you just sometimes change them because just because so for us it's always the same books but because Luca really likes those books during whatever he does in the bathroom those yeah. books for uh, the okay I have been reading the same books for five years for the good night <laughs> like, <laughs> 
but there's no way and i i think it's more a so uh, soothing um yeah. feeling that feeling that he has but as for the bookshelf yeah that's like my my own environment uh sometimes i yeah i change them i add a lot of them you know because i i keep on buying new books um so yeah there are parts that I can touch and that I can rotate and change the books. Others, yeah. no. <laughs> but okay. As long as he's joy. Yeah, I follow. I follow him, and that's the point. We have to follow them, and yeah. it, it's the most difficult part to try to understand their needs and the yeah. rhythm and their likes. They do what they don't like, and you know, as a parent, <laughs> it's a very difficult. Thing to yeah, but I think it, it's very important and an important point to to say that we need to follow our children. So we might have plans to say, oh, uh, we want our children to do this and this by that time, or um, they need to be able to read that book. That, that we shouldn't think mm. they need to. It's more like, ha, ha, like what are the interests in it? What's going to nurture their love of reading? Because then after you can leverage leverage this interest and they can just start reading whatever they they want absolutely yeah. absolutely otherwise you're gonna have the opposite result the completely you know of yes. <laughs> yeah so it's yeah 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 well the more choice they have the better that's yeah. another thing. um what i would like to add about yeah. creating the environment is this we've been talking about the environment yeah. at home but we can also create an environment, a friendly environment at school. Yeah. Because, and at school sometimes can be more difficult because the activities are so, so scheduled and you mm -hmm. can't just, you know, be free to, um, to go and take a book and read it on your own. But as, as a teacher, I I've always, and I didn't teach Italian, I, I, I was teaching maths and science, but I've and always, English. and English, yeah. but I've <laughs> always uh, made, you know, some time and just a little bit of time for them to be free and look at the books that were in the classroom corner. And one tip I could give to teachers is just to, as soon as they can, just to find some sort of, you, see, you know, those sort of trolleys, small trolleys that can can hold quite a few books yeah. and put the books there so they can go to the child in, in into the classroom and you don't have to take the child into the um to to the um to the library or oh, yeah. to another classroom is the book that is in the classroom. So the teacher can work in small groups and and in turns, a group can go in the corner and be free to browse the books independently, to sm smelling them, flipping, uh, choosing them, uh, looking at pictures, do what they yeah. want, but have them in their hands, have them yeah. touch them and smell them and start having a more close and intimate relationship yeah. with them on their own and on the yeah. other hand you you can organize as a teacher sometime when you read uh, a book aloud like dr ibrahim uh, said uh, yesterday very interesting uh, uh tips she gave um, to to teachers so yes you um, yeah, I I yes. like the idea of the trolley you, you, you take around also because it is, so generally it's smaller than a, a library. Yes. So you have less books, but less doesn't mean necessarily that it's, it's fewer choices. It, it can also be that they can pay attention to all the books more easily yes. and they can pick up one more easily than if they had like 50 yes. books, Absolutely. 100 books, then they, they don't know where to start. So that, yes. that's Absolutely. Really a library can be a bit disorientating yeah. or mesmerizing, you know, or you've yeah, got all these books, you want to go and look at them, but you don't know where to start. Yeah, you don't yeah. know how they are uh, classified or or yeah. um, what is that that yeah. section or, or the other. So, yes, if you as a teacher choose a few books, 10, 20, 
uh, even 30 books are put on this trolley and you change. Yeah, of you course. Know, you you yeah. keep them for a month and then you change yeah. and other classes can yeah, use, you can, uh, you can exchange yes, true, yeah. the other classes. And um, yeah. you, you, you don't, <laughs> because there is always the problem of not having enough room on the walls for all the things that all the teachers want to put uh, there. But if the trolley is a movable trolley, there is no problem. There is no problem. Yeah. <laughs> and if uh, if they can they bring their chair, they can sit on the on the on pavement on on the rug, depending how the uh, uh, the classroom is organized, depending on where the classroom is. In Italian classroom, they are organized in one way; English uh, organized in the other way. But yeah. the idea can be useful for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. what what we've been saying for a classroom, of course has to be applied for the environment of our home. So also yeah. in at home, uh, for example, if you want to build this environment, the first, the very first thing is to guarantee this physical access to books that she that Anna was talking about. So again, if you want to, yeah, I have books everywhere. That's that's one thing that you can do. You can have reading spots, okay? Cozy ones, like eat whatever you do, but also like a cushion on the floor is totally fine. If you want to have it, you know, very designed and um, nice and cozy, it's totally good. But if we don't have time, if we don't have, you know, any idea, space. yeah, yeah, the space, <laughs> like in my house, there is very little, yeah. And also, like the bookshelf itself, as we were saying about the library, the bookshelf itself shouldn't be too wide, too big, should be yeah. as doesn't need to. Yeah, within their heights as well, because yes. they have to be, uh, especially. Yeah, they need to be able to take them themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And put them back yeah. if they want to. They have to have this um, physical access, they have to be um, naturally. Um, yeah, in contact, in a relation with, um, they have to have a natural interaction. That's the word I, oh, I wanted to say uh, yeah. with, um, with, with the books because they are, it's a, uh, they are mat mat a material thing, but they are so much more. They can offer so much more. If, you, as she said, you can smell them, you can touch, them, especially with really, really uh, small children like toddlers or even babies. You can yeah. let them play, you know, they start from the very beginning as an early age, they start to understand what's a book, uh, that they can use it, they can flip it, they can go through the pages, even if they don't know how to read, they don't know what it is. Yeah. It's curiosity as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So we have to aim there, Curio enable curiosity and guarantee a physical access to books. and. Yeah games and toys of course like it has to be yeah, the whole house it. as i said yeah. before but yeah, yeah books are the most important i if i can say it <laughs> yeah, I, I agree and so now i wanted to ask you more precisely about any so because so as as teachers you have experiences of this but are there any do's and don'ts you would mm -hmm. recommend to parents regarding how to read a book to to children and may, maybe like if there is something you see okay maybe many parents are skipping this step or anything you can think of that that could be useful for parents to to read uh, a book to their children yeah, I might say that uh, thanks to Lucas Library um, with our social networks like Facebook and Instagram, or whatever, we we got a lot of uh, messages asking like, how can I choose a book? What, which book I yeah. should read or whatever? So uh, you shouldn't buy a book without knowing the book, right? <laughs> well. First of all, as Vivian was saying before, it's a job. Yeah. And it's important to, if you don't know anything about um, children literature, you, you, you have to try to go into a library or 
and in a bookshop and try to browse about yourself, trying to know it and try to get to know the author. Also because you have to get the one that you like. That you like. That you like. Yeah. But also the book, that also the good ones. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there are some tips to choose a book. Uh, first of all, when you've got a book in your hand, you have to make sure that there aren't, there shouldn't be any kind of stereotypes in it. Because picture mm -hmm. books, there are so many uh, available. Some of them are not good. They're just... Mm -hmm. I guess like with any book, there are good ones. Yeah, yeah, and... absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So pay attention to stereotypes. Pay attention to the content. It, it shouldn't be banal at all. because. Like Dr. Ibrahim showed us yesterday, there are books that you can work with it for a whole week, yeah. just on one book. Yeah. So the content is important. It can't be banal. It can't be trivial. It has to tell you something. Yeah. Okay. And most, uh, the most important one is the language. Because if we choose to use picture books to, the, to help our child develop another language, we have to choose a good book that is well written. Yeah. So um, try not to simplify because it, <laughs> the author of a picture book has balanced every single word in that yeah. page yeah so you read once you don't understand it read it twice read it three times um try to read the pictures with the child yeah and then you get to understand the whole meaning but the language in picture books it's very well chosen every single word is chosen books yeah. and more than anything else I, you everybody knows julia donaldson don't they and the the, the author of the gruffalo yeah and uh, she is really good and she writes in a wonderful uh, way yeah, yeah. Uh, this is and her her characteristic is to write in rhyme nice. using rhyming words yeah. And it's not easy not at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we just read them again and again and again. And the child will get accustomed to the sound of the words. And then we will understand the meaning. Okay. They don't need some teachers ask me, oh well, I didn't I didn't teach them the past tense, so I can't uh, read that book. Well, you don't have to yeah, you, uh, tell I them that. Agree with that yeah. <laughs> okay, just read it. Read it. Yeah. Let them enjoy it. Okay. And they can pick it up from the context. Exactly. Exactly. And with picture books, it's amazing. It's a full resource. It has, you know, many have already said, but because of the pictures, you, you, you can, can you interpret can. and comprehend. Uh, yeah the yeah. story they are not so straightforward so i can tell you so there is you can see there is a lot okay thank you very much <laughs> there is a lot of written in here okay but every yeah. single word is very well chosen yeah so and the 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 pictures can help you sometimes the pictures as dr Hebron said just they show the opposite of what yeah. The, the author, like in this book, for yeah. example, Rose this book walk. is is a good example. Oh, that's that's terrible angle. Okay, yeah. so there, there is the um, look at look at the pictures in this one. It's amazing. This is this is a classic. This is fantastic. Yeah. We, we so, have it in Korean at home. Ah, <laughs> uh, we have to find it in Korean. So here there is a hen. Who, and you have to look at the expression of the hen already. It's 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 a masterpiece. Really the the, uh, the author, and uh, and the hen is not aware at all that a fox is behind yeah. her and is. 
So the child, of course, will notice that immediately. Right so we'll start. The message to... funny. Exactly. But again, there are all the prepositions around, in, on, all the prepositions. So you can you can actually um, enhance a kind of um, structure and vocabulary mm -hmm. with this book as a teacher or as a mother, if you want, because if you read it again and again, mm. these words will um, acquire meaning more and more. Yeah. Okay. And and just, also just, there, yeah. So yeah, this sorry, well, one, one, one thing you said about some some people might think, oh, I haven't taught the past and so I can't read this. I guess it's more for like foreign language teachers more than parents for reading to their children but yeah. one thing to to keep in mind is that we don't need to start with the rule to then show the example we can start exactly. with the example and, and they get used to it they get exposed to it and then from then it's a lot easier to understand the rule because it's not abstract it's based on something concrete sometimes yeah. older children will tell you the rule yeah yeah. After all the example, they the are the ones who tell you yeah. the rule. If it's you the final step. It. It's the final step. Yeah. Basically, is you know the the final result, and you must be thrilled when you get something like that. And also, you know, there are they say there are the three uh, reading, uh, three steps of reading. So the first time, it's a completely new story with new characters. So oh, yeah. of course they don't go right uh, into into the story, and then but it's just you know an introduction. You as an adult, you have to already <laughs> know what and uh, what yeah reading. yeah yeah. But for them, for the for the children, and then there's the second um, step. If you if you read it again and again, the second time the child already is looking for these important yeah. aspects in the book that he likes or she likes okay yeah. okay so because they already know the story okay yeah. and there is the interaction between the adult and the child grows yeah. the more you read the same story the more the interaction grows and develops so you can lead the interaction in the same language you are reading the book or yeah. you can lead the interaction in another language where the child is more confident okay. yeah, yeah absolutely so um especially in a classroom you can if you want to teach english to children that are not mother tongue english you have to see whether you can chat with them in english or you may have to use their own mother tongue yeah it was another, a, another language i was doing like that with the um, you know the early grades the first grade i with them i was i was reading and you know building the story time in english but then the interaction itself it was first in korean because they are they were korean and then slowly in English and then there is of course the final step the final reading then the fun starts you know you get the interaction you can build the activities and games and the the, the full story the actually the full picture book becomes the activity the game so, so don't be afraid to read yeah. the same story again and again and again especially if you're asked to yeah because it's, it's yeah. a journey there are steps and you start little by little. Everything in all this multilingual project, if you might, you know, call it project, it's it's a journey. So you have to build the environment step by step. You have to prepare yourself, as we said this before, step by step. And you learn as well together with the with with your yeah. child or with your students, and then for themselves they are building you know brick by brick this yeah. fantastic castle i would like to yeah. say because it's magical <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's something it, it really is something magical that you can you can actually share with them um, and enjoy yeah, yeah 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 it's, it's really quality time you can spend with your children yeah it's a it's a gift to them you know, like practically speaking, learning another language, it, it is a gift. 
for so many aspects that we need another video, another interview to, 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 to analyze them all. But it's a gift also for us, you know, adults, teachers and, and parents. Yeah. And yeah, I don't want to be, you know, get sentimental or stuff, but uh, starting this journey with Luca, you know, I, I am, it's the first time that I have a son. So <laughs> I'm a first time mom. And the, the very, the most thing they, that concerned me, I was afraid to not be able to be there, you know, present, especially with all these phones and social media and distraction, uh, you yeah. know, in our lives, like job. Uh, I was, I was afraid to not be able to be present for mm -hmm. him, but then starting this journey you know bilingual journey multilingual journey with him it helped me to be yeah. there yeah and i completely and, agree and, yeah. I, I feel the same with my sons like especially because I, I feel like we were purposefully creating some time it's not just when we find it we 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 think okay i'm going to it, it can be but i guess we can just play outside or whatever that, that's also quality time but when it comes to reading writing we need to plan a bit ahead uh yeah. and and but if we do it in an enjoyable way it can be a moment that can get us closer to each other so that, that's quite yeah. important as well yes it is it is absolutely absolutely yeah uh, yeah, yeah the, the computer is abandoning us. That's uh... <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's hope we, we, no, no, okay, we won't be too much longer. But uh, so maybe while we're waiting for Vivian, maybe Anna, you can I'll tell me. But... Ah, yeah, Done. sorry. Done. I'm here. Sorry. Okay. I, uh, uh, I solved the problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I was wondering uh, so you talked about the environment that you have different little bookshelves or uh, books a bit everywhere but yeah. do you so there, you have three languages books in yeah. three languages do you categorize them like these are the books in english here you put the books in italian here the books in korean or are they all mixed <laughs> they are all mixed they are all mixed also here there is a little space this is my space the only space that i have <laughs> and in the, the the rest of it there are nine um mini bookshelf I don't know blocks I don't know how to call them um but these are all Lucas and they are all like in Korean and English and English. Italian but I must say that in in his room and Italian yeah in in his bedroom we have mostly that you you get Korean and English uh, books there as well but mostly they're Italian and that's because I think my <laughs> theory that is because I am the one who reads him uh the good night stories and I'm the mother who speaks in Italian and yeah. then that's why these books are mainly in ah. Italian I think again is the, the emotional sphere that yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah uh, influences the yeah the books in his room the section of yeah. yeah yeah but everything is mixed yeah we are lucky because also my husband can speak and read in english so english is more like a jolly or like a um yeah um, language for for everyone okay yeah exactly. as it really is in the world it's yeah. actually the language we use to communicate when there is we are all together we are all together because mm. there is my husband who's english um and he understands a bit of italian but english is better yeah. and uh, her husband is korean so english is what unifies yeah. us and luca understood that quite quickly so he knows that uh, if he speaks in, if he speaks Italian to my husband, it may be understood or not. Uh, there are quite a yes. few <laughs> possibilities. Now. So he goes there and tries to speak English. Uh, of course, it is a third language, but he's very good in making himself understood. No he doubt, tries. It. He tries. He tries. Yeah, they, he tries. They do that very quickly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they do. They do. So we'll, we'll get into the end of our interview. I was just wondering if there was anything else that we haven't covered 
that you think might be important for parents or teachers or both to know about the, the creating this environment? Um, again, yeah. I think uh, the for the do and don'ts, I would like to add that, um, you know, teachers as well and parents, maybe uh, with, with, with the book, when they read the book, especially with picture books, so with images, they try to teach the language, but as we said yeah. continuously <laughs> until now, we I have don't. to enable, we have to use the language. And with picture books, we have to use also pictures. And they, they are the language through the book. So we shouldn't, please don't uh, go there like, oh, what's this? No, what's this? How do you say uh, horse in, in Italian yeah. or in Korean? So that's completely the wrong approach, I must say. It because... puts too much pressure on the child and the ability to speak more than Absolutely. anything else. Absolutely. And it becomes less natural yeah. and less enjoyable because the book is fun. Yeah. That's the first aim read a book is to have fun and to enjoy the story together yeah. yeah and then all the rest comes after and if you have fun as as dr hebron said if you can hook them with the yeah. story yeah. then it's easier to do all the rest but we have to be you know they they absorb the language they acquire the language the more they read and it's not us that we say that so Dr. Krashen says that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's and, a... um, so I've got we've got um, the last thing we want to show you is a yeah. um, is, we okay. chose three books for the parents, not for the children, and we found this one, Michael Rosen. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah, that's really it's in English. But it's very practical. Yeah. It gives you tips. So um, it's very practical, very easy to read. And um, he's a parent himself, apart from being a, a poet oh, laureate yeah. and uh, very famous in, in, uh, in English, of course, but in England. But um, he's, he, um, he wrote hundreds of books, hundreds for children. Um, and then this... To, we chose two picture books that are for parents. Okay, first one, we tr okay. try, try one. Okay, this is in Italian and it's very interesting because the, um, the author, I don't know whether you can read it, is called Sergio Ruzier and okay. he is Italian, but he, he lives in New York and uh, he is the author of the book and he is the illustrator as well. The, um, you can understand, even if you don't read Italian, the title. Yeah, it's stupid. Very but... interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting because the original title is... It is not a picture book. Where, where, where did you find it? It is not a picture book. So this ah. little, this little um, character is very angry because he finds a book, he finds a book, but it's not a picture book. Yeah. And I leave you with this, okay? I'm not yeah. going. So he tells you, what can I do if a book hasn't got any pictures? So it, it's to go a little bit oh, further. Okay. And it's really, really interesting. It, and again, please read the cover as an adult. Read the back. Read the inside here and the inside there and everything of this book. This book will tell you uh, a lot about difficulty of mm. being able to read, what a book can give you once you learn to read, and it tells you through the pictures. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. And then there is this other book by Lane Smith. I don't know whether you know the author. And again, Lane Smith is a 
very, very uh, good. I think he is American. And it's a book. <laughs> the title tells you everything, but I hope um, is going to hook you and you're going to find it and read it because then again, it tells you about the importance yeah. of books. Books yeah. as something that you can touch and hold and read. So Much more than a computer. Yeah. Or a cell phone, I might say. Yeah. So this is what we want to um, give to yeah, all. Thank you people. very much. Yeah, these, these are very intriguing. <laughs> Just by looking yeah. at the title, the pictures and what you say, it's really intriguing. If you could send me the, the titles and authors, I can Absolutely. add them in the description of this video. Um, yes. Yeah. And we thank you very much again. Just to thank remind uh, everyone, so if, uh, so Anna and Vivian, you work with parents and schools uh, to yes. have them on the bilingual journey. Uh, yes. If you want to, they, they want to work with you, is the best place to go to your website? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yes, Lucas, lucaslibrary.com? Yes. Dot .com, okay. Lucaslibrary.com. And um, we, you've got loads and loads of um, activities. Principles. Yeah. Free, 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 free resources. resources yeah. activities uh, within uh, five or six books that are a bundle. We, we created these bundles about a subject. Yeah, it's it's so, a more general game or activity that we um, wanted to, I mean, to let parents and teachers to be able to connect them through a similar theme or a similar character of a stories that they've read yeah. with these activities. Oh, because wow. then when you read the, the story, as we said, they learn the vocabulary, the structure, and you're going to use these vocabulary and these structures <clears throat> sorry to play with them to play with them so you use it within another context yeah and, okay. and again it's more natural and fun and wow everything is a repetition right <laughs> it's a circle <laughs> yeah so and that's all written italian i'm guessing yeah yeah but yeah. again you can use them uh, i mean in the any language activities are in english the activities ah. are in english but you can use uh, for whatever languages. I mean, I use them with Luca in Italian. Because yeah. that means they are pictures. And they are... So, so, they are oh, okay. So I misunderstood. You, all the instructions were in English? The instructions, oh, you... what we offer is are like memory games or bingo games. Yeah. Like in the material, yeah, the material. the materials are, the, are these. Anyway, there's going to be an English version soon. So... Yeah. So oh, we're wow. going to, working on it. We're working Thank on it. It's not going to be yeah. an accident. <laughs> Our aim is to translate it into English and Korean, uh, yeah. the whole website, but it's a huge. It's great. So, so maybe not the people who are watching now, but if they catch up later, that's going yeah. to be something that's going to be available for them. The future awaits us. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Wow. Thank you very much for these resources. Thank you, Yoshito. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Organize. a nice uh, weekend. Yeah. Yes. You too, and everyone who's watching us. Well, we're ready for dinner now. Yeah. Dinner time for us. Okay. <laughs> so have a nice dinner. Thank you. So have a Thank nice you. day, everybody.